Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Walking Together. Um, we're continuing this week in Romans chapter 16. Those of you that received the messages on WhatsApp, this is what we said this week. I began with saying, may this be a blessed and fruitful year for each of you. And that is my prayer, that you'd see God move in fresh ways. This week, I want to talk about being a servant. And I believe that, yes, it's coming up to being a whole new chapter for us as a church. We're becoming, journey, we're coming from being Sharon and journey life and going into being kingdom life. And it's a whole new chapter for us as a church. But I know I'm so aware that it's a whole new chapter for me as a person. Aside of all that, God is just doing new things and it's not just a personal thing. It really is in so many ways a new season. God is doing new things in the earth. He's doing in the church, in individuals. He's speaking in new ways. He's moving in new ways. He's opening new doors. God is doing a new thing in a way that I've not experienced before. I've been a Christian since I was a little girl and I've seen God do fantastic things. But in this season, there is change like I have never been aware of before. And I also want to say to you that the things that you've done that you thought were unseen and that you thought didn't matter, God was cheering you on all the way. He was beside you. He was behind you. He was before you. And he continues to be that. He continues to be alongside you. He continues to know your every beat of your heart and your every step of the journey. But be ready because this truly is, in so many ways, a new season. Maybe God's calling you to serve in different ways. Maybe he's calling you to a deeper commitment. Maybe he's calling you to more courage. Maybe he's calling you to a higher price. Maybe he's calling you out of your depth. I know he's calling each of us. There isn't one of us that's overlooked. God is calling us into this new season. But with it, there's a new equipping. There's a new grace. And it's an exciting thing because God is with us as well as before us. God has gone before us and made a way. My questions this week. Well, I've said, I'm continuing this week in Romans 16. And at the beginning, it mentions a lady called Phoebe, and it says that she is a servant of the church. And then as we read the rest of the chapter, there are many other characters that serve in lots of other ways. So my questions, how are you serving? Second question, is God equipping and training you in new ways? Are you aware of it yet? I hope you are. Question three, what is at the top of your list of priorities. What sets your agenda? What makes you get up in the morning? What is your priority list like? What things have to give way to other things? What matters the most? And then question four, what would you like to see as the outcome of you serving God? Let's pray, let's pray. Lord God, I just invite you right into this session. I just ask you to direct. I ask you to speak. I ask you to just open up your word, not just what I share, but I ask you to speak directly to people as well during this time as we share. I ask that you will move by your spirit and that you'll reveal your heart, reveal yourself. Help us to reveal ourselves. And I just pray that you would just bring life, bring understanding through this time. Thank you for your word that is so alive and so sharp. And I just pray that it would do all that you desired that it would do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So Phoebe, it says that she was a servant. But do you know, when it says that word over her being a servant, it's the exact same word that Jesus uses of himself in Romans 15, 8. 
it says, I am convinced that Jesus the Messiah was sent as a servant to the Jewish people to fulfill the promises God made to our ancestors and to prove God's faithfulness. So the same kind of servant that she was, Jesus was. So being a servant is a good thing. It has lots of negative ideas around being a servant, but if Jesus was willing to be a servant, I'm up for it too. I am up for it too. I am ready to serve in whatever way he chooses to call. Jesus was willing to be a servant, to bring God's goodness to you and me. He became a servant, not just to the Jewish people, he became a servant to you and me as well. Living his life and laying down his life, being born, living and dying for you and me. I think I can live and die for him too, don't you? But he was a servant. Phoebe was a servant. But God also said to honour her. To honour her. Paul had such huge respect for her. And he just made it really clear that she was to be honoured. Servants are not dogs' bodies. It's a whole different thing. She was meant to be honoured. She was meant to be blessed. She was meant to be rewarded. And your work has been seen. And it will be rewarded and you are not meant to be a slave and it is time for some of those chains to come off because we are bond servants we're there because of love we're there because of our adoration we're there because we adore him we love him we are not slaves and people have put us under bondages that they had no right to put us under bondage to and it's time god is breaking chains god is setting us free so that we can serve him so that we can be all that he meant us to be so that we could live in his goodness god has got design in pl in purpose and in plan for you and me he has all kinds of things and he does not want us to be frustrated there are times when we have to go through difficulties God allows it God even causes it but he never meant us to be in fear or in bondage and it's time for some of you to come out of those kind of things and to come into a new understanding of who you are of who he is and his principles for life so that you can know when to say yes and when to say no and you can live free from fear and walk in his light and in his goodness in whole new ways now as we're going down this chapter i talked last time just before christmas about lots of the different characters in this chapter but obviously I didn't get all the way through and there's quite a bit more that I'd like to share and as we go in through chapter 16 we come across this guy called Tertius I'm not sure if that's right and that's in chapter 16 and verse 22 and it says I Tertius am the one transcribing this letter for Paul and I too send my greetings to all of you as a follower of the Lord now, Tertius, his name, it means third. So, and in many ways, this guy wasn't even playing second fiddle. He was number three in the list because he was writing the letter for Paul who was receiving the information from God. So he wasn't even, he was serving Paul who was serving God. He wasn't even second fiddle. And he never knew what would happen Possibly as far as he was concerned, he was not writing a letter that would go to a church, maybe a couple of churches, and that would be the end of that. He never knew that his name would be famous, and I don't know if you've ever heard of him before. So he wasn't doing it to have his name up in lights. He was doing it to serve the message. He was doing it to serve Paul. Ultimately, he was doing it to serve God. He was not expecting that 2,000 something years later, you and I would be hearing about him and knowing what he did. And all that he wanted to do was send love and greetings. That was his only addition. I send my greetings because I love you too. But he was willing to not just be second fiddle, but be third, because what mattered was the kingdom. What mattered was the message. What mattered was serving God. And he was willing 
to just be behind the scenes, do what God required of him, and just be a blessing to Paul. Just sit there as Paul was just sharing what God had put on his heart, and he was writing it all out for him. As Paul was seeking God and just receiving that inspiration, he's there writing. We're not here to draw a following to ourselves. And if anybody starts doing that, yeah, there's something not right somewhere. We're not here to gain a fan club. We're not here, see me, notice me. That doesn't mean we should be afraid of being seen. But if it's all about our reputation, we've lost something somewhere. And if we're trying to get people being in our little club, we've lost something somewhere. It's all about the desires of God the purposes of God, the heart of God, the love of God. That's what it's for. It says in verse 3, it says, Greet Prisca, or Priscilla, it depends on the version, and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. Where it says greet there, it, says to, it means to enfold in the arms. It's not just a higher. Where it says greet, Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers. It's embracing, it's accepting, it's becoming part with, it's becoming one with, being that body that is connected deeply in heart and in purpose and in love. Embracing, to embrace means you open up and you draw in. And that was Paul's instruction, greet them, really greet them, really open our arms to each other. That's part of our service, that's part of showing the nature and the life of God, enfold them. And it was Paul's attitude towards all the people that he mentions here, a heart of gratitude, of affection, of admiration, of devotion, lots of other things, they all come out in his attitude to every person that he mentions. Some people he says what they do, some people he just says who they are, but whatever, his attitude towards them is one of love and respect and honour and acceptance and he calls them fellow workers. Fellow workers, we're all in this together. Whatever we're doing, we are in it together. And that was his heart towards each of them. Even though they were separated by a distance, they were all part of a common journey and a common purpose and a common goal. And he recognised that they were there alongside. You know, we can say we've got our own walk with God and we need our own walk with God, but we also need to be deeply engaged with the body. Jesus laid down his life for the body. He loves the church. He loves his church and he gave his life for the church. The church is a big deal. Church is a really big deal. And I don't know about you, but there are so many people that I love so deeply and so dearly within the church. And they've made my life so much richer, so very much richer. And God meant us to be a deeply committed community, loving and serving each other and him. It says in verse 8, Greet Ampliatus, my dear friend in the Lord. And that's it, my dear friend in the Lord. The deep connection that we have is in his life and in his spirit. Our relationships should be unique, really, because we're not just joined because we like each other. We're joined in the Lord. And the mix of people that there should be within any church, people that love each other that normally perhaps wouldn't even associate together. But we love each other and we know that we need each other to be all that God called us to be. We are fellow workers, we are connected in him. It's deep, it's in the spirit. It's not just in the emotions, although it's definitely there. It's in the spirit too, we're connected in him for his direction and for his purpose. Ephesians 4, 15 and 16, and I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. It says, we will remain strong and always sincere in our love as we express the truth. All our direction and ministries will flow from Christ and lead us deeper into him. The anointed head of his body, the church, 
for his body has been formed in his image and is closely joined together and constantly connected as one. And every member has been given divine gifts to contribute to the growth of all. And as these gifts operate effectively throughout the whole body, we are built up and made perfect in love. You know, you could spend about an hour and a half just reading that just looking into that and looking what it really means. If you don't know what to read tomorrow, read Ephesians 4, 15 and 16, it's fantastic. We need to be sincere, we need to be genuine, but do you know, people come together, like say the Freemasons, and the reason they come together is to further their own ambition. When we come together, it's not to further our own ambition. When we come together, it's to be his hands and feet. It's to be brothers and sisters, it's to serve him and to honour him and to see his kingdom come and his will be done. That's what we really want, that's what we're seeking. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom, not my kingdom, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. It's good. Why are you working? What is your motivation in life? What it's all about for you? It says in verse 10, greet Apelles, a good man whom Christ approves, and give my greetings to the believers from the household of Aristobulus. It says over Apelles that he's a good man whom Christ approves. And when, it's like when I met the local Catholic priest, I've been brought up with the idea that the Catholics have really missed things. You know, they're really, they're not quite kosher. But when I met Father Pat, the local Catholic priest, I could just see so clear that he loved God, just like I did. And I could see so well God's presence with him. So even before I knew much about him, I thought, right, God approves of you. I'm not turning my nose up at you. And as I've got to know him, he's a lovely man. And within the body of Christ, there might be people that you don't quite agree with. But your opinion isn't the big deal, I'm afraid. It's what God thinks of them. And if he loves them and gave himself for them, then we need to treat them with honour and with respect. We need to treat them with care and concern because what God thinks of them, what Christ thinks of them, if he approves of them, who am I to criticise his servant? And yes, there are times when we have to talk to people about things and there are times when there's issues, but we always do it knowing that they are first and foremost, they belong to Christ and he loves them. So that respect and that care, it has to be there because they belong to him. It says in Romans 15, and verse 17. This is from a translation called the BSB. It says, therefore, I exult in Christ Jesus in my service to God. What does exult mean? It means to be so excited that you jump up and down like a child. And that's what our service to God should look like. Whether it's cleaning the toilets, welcoming new people, Whatever it is, we need to have that joy of knowing that God is cheering us on. That he sees who we are, he sees our heart, he sees what we do, and nothing is missed. We often do things and we think it doesn't matter to anybody, but I tell you, it matters to God. Every choice that you make to honour him, whether it's what you physically do or the attitude of your heart, Everything that you do that is designed to please him and to honour him, he celebrates it. He appreciates it. Even the things that only go on in your own heart and mind, if it is a choice to please him. If it's a choice to give way in some means or other 
and it's just about showing his love and grace and it's not appreciated by anybody else it's appreciated by him where you do all sorts of things maybe you're even misunderstood he appreciates it if you did it for him even if you made a mistake he still applauds your heart and it gives him room to direct you and to show you but our life with him we are also meant to be excited about serving him because it is not in vain the things that he called you to it is not in vain and it is not without reward we have eternal reward we have him for eternity but there is more than we have begun to imagine that he is putting aside as a reward he is a rewarder of those that seek him both in this life and the next he is a rewarder and nothing that you have done will be missed we can be excited because there is a purpose none of it is pointless don't ever say it's pointless it's not in vain it is not pointless it's all part of your kingdom come your will be done and you would be amazed. I've questioned in the past whether God has like his own Facebook account. You know how we celebrate when we, you know, people's children do things and they put it on Facebook and they're really proud and God celebrates what you do. And we need to have a joy in what we're doing. We need to love what we're doing because when you do things in freedom, in his acceptance, it doesn't matter if nobody else notices. He's excited about what you're doing if it's for him he's excited about your desire to please him and he celebrates you so what you do you can do it with an open hand and just give it freely even if nobody else sees it or appreciates it because you have the applause of heaven and you can be free to enjoy serving him with your whole heart serve him with all that you are and all that you have whatever he calls you to be that 100 percent in verses 17 and 18 it says dear brothers and sisters i'd like to give you one final word of caution watch out for those who cause divisions and offenses among you when they antagonize you by speaking of things that are contrary to the teachings you've received, don't be caught in their snare. For people like this are not truly serving the Lord, our Messiah, but are being driven by their own desires for a following, using, utilizing their smooth words and well-rehearsed blessings. They seek to deceive the hearts of innocent ones. We do need to be careful. We do need to be open-hearted to each other, but if somebody is trying to build their own little empire, we're not part of their little empire. We're part of your kingdom come, your will be done. And yes, we are a body together. And yes, we have leaders within that church, but it's all part of a submission to Christ and submitting to each other in love, not building our own little empire. That's never where we need to be never we need to trust god for our reward we need to trust god for our success and we just need to do our part david when he got his little sling and sent those stones he didn't necessarily know the outcome he just knew the plot and the plan that god had given him and he just went along with it and what god has called you to do might not seem a lot but you'd be surprised at the difference it can make whether you're bringing down some giants or whether you're building something new, whether you're repairing the wall like Nehemiah, your part matters. Everybody's part is important. It will not be completed as it ought to be without what you uniquely bring. You have much to offer. Verse 23, it says, my kind host, this is in the Passion again, my kind host here in Corinth, Gaius, likewise greets you, along with the entire congregation of his house church, also the city administrator, Erastus, and our brother Quartus send their warm greetings. Gaius, he was hospitable. That means so much. When people can come in among us, 
and feel genuine hospitality. And I want to honour both Faith and Jennifer that greet most Sundays at our church because they show such genuine warmth and hospitality. But it's not just their job, it's our job too, to show a genuine warmth and hospitality and care to people when they come among us. To just show good manners, genuine interest and a warm welcome. It's worth such a lot, makes such a difference. We're not just there to please ourselves, we're there to extend that love and that affection and that open door. Erastus means lovable. It says that he's a, he was a wealthy and powerful man. Now some of us can have a problem with wealthy and powerful people, but they're worthy of love too, you know. Don't let petty jealousy get in the way. God sometimes does call wealthy and powerful people and we need to be careful of our hearts towards them. We need to be careful that we love them and that we honour them. And this man was not hung up by what he had. He was, he was lovable. We're all, you know, he was lovable. And we need to give love where it's appropriate. And sometimes we need to love the unlovable. People that maybe you feel they're more intelligent than you, maybe less intelligent, better off than you, not as well off as you. Maybe they've got it together more than you. Maybe they don't smell so good. Maybe they've just finished a can of beer and it's the number six this morning. Whoever it is that God brings our way, we need to be ready with love and with respect, whoever they are. It says he was the city administrator. Now, could you love a politician? Do you pray for our politicians? If a politician came into our church, would you all start spitting and snarling and would you be very cynical? We need to look at our own prejudices and who we're willing to serve because whoever God puts in front of us, we're meant to serve them in some way. We need to put our biases, our prejudices on one side. Some people can't cope with people full of tattoos. Some people can't cope with... Da, da, da. There's, there's lists and lists and lists. You need to look at your own list and you need to get beyond it. You need to get beyond it. All the people that society didn't approve of, those were the ones that people got in trouble with for mixing with. He mixed with all kinds of people, tax collectors and sinners was the like coverall term. And they all felt accepted in his presence. They all felt welcomed. They all flocked to him because of who he was and how he was. And they all knew that he loved them. He loved them not how many years down the road when they got their act together. He loved them that day how they were. He just loved them, loved them so much. And it mentions quarters in that verse 23 as well. And I looked at some other stuff and it says he became the Bishop of Beirut. Now Beirut has a long and very eventful history. And how would you feel today if God called you to be the Bishop of Beirut, to go into places of real danger would you be willing to trust him and go into those places? Would you be willing to go where no man, you know, with his right head on, would go unless God called him? We need to come into that place where whatever God requires of us, whether it's to be the Bishop of Beirut, whether it's to be the cleaner, whether it's to be the one that cleans up the vomit from the drunks, that we can do it because of his love. That we can do it because we've received love. We've received such great love. We've received such great compassion when we didn't deserve it. And we need to be ready to share it. We understand our own faults and failings and we can try and excuse them. 
but actually we need to be honest about them because then we see other people in a different light. I've received grace so I can give grace. I've received forgiveness so I give forgiveness. We need to understand people need grace just like we needed grace but we also need that courage to go into the places of real danger and that comes from the security of knowing that he loves us that he celebrates us that we're part of a body that we've not got to do it alone that there are people that care about us that will back us that will comfort us that will pray for us but most of all that we're rooted and grounded in the goodness of God and if he calls us he will equip, equip us even if it's stuff we don't understand he will equip he always equips when he calls us it might seem as though it's a bit last minute you have to step out and then the equipping comes but whatever he calls you to he is able to equip you and he will not fail you and he will not forsake you Daniel Joseph other people in the Bible they didn't serve in the church and we don't yes we should all serve in the church in some ways but some people's primary ministry is out in society whether it's in a school in a hospital where, whatever it is even in a factory whatever we do we do it as unto the Lord whatever we do we do it as a servant of his whatever we do we do it as part of his kingdom he can give us wisdom for the tasks that we have he can give us grace for the people that we meet some people they just do a job it is just their job but God still wants to equip he still wants to bless you some people your ministry really is your calling God will definitely equip and bless and make you fruitful wherever you are you invite God into whatever you do day by day by day because God is interested we should be ministers wherever we are in church and out of church in season out of season ready to serve ready to do what God is calling us to do and what God is prompting us to do Phoebe mentioned Phoebe at the beginning she traveled around a thousand miles with her letter today that journey still takes 19 hours that's now have you ever traveled for 19 hours apart from maybe on a plane but that journey of a thousand miles was a really rough journey what was in it for her what was in it for her she didn't do it for her own advancement I don't know how risky it was for her I guess it wasn't without risk and it certainly wouldn't have been without discomfort but she was faithful and she saw it through and she took that letter from Paul to the Roman Church and we are blessed today and sometimes God calls us to do something and we don't know the big picture but you and I are blessed today because of what she did 2,000 years ago. We're still gaining benefit from her obedience. And when you do what God asks you to do, you don't know what the outcome's gonna be. You don't know what it's gonna lead to. You don't know what it's gonna do. Paul said she was to be honored. God honors you. God cares about what you do and he cares about your fruitfulness it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 26 to 30 from the passion brothers and sisters consider who you were when God called you to salvation not many of you were wise scholars by human standards nor were many of you in positions of power not many of you were considered the elite when you answered God's call but God chose those whom the world considers foolish to shame those who think they are wise and God chose the puny and powerless to shame the high and mighty he chose the lowly the laughable in the world's eyes nobodies 
so that he could shame the somebodies. For he chose what is regarded as insignificant in order to supersede what is regarded as prominent, so that there would be no place for prideful boasting in God's presence. For it is not from man that we draw our life, but from God, as we are being joined to Jesus, the anointed one. And now he is our God-given wisdom, our virtue, our holiness, and our redemption. So you can't turn around and say you're inadequate. You can't turn around and say you've got nothing to give. When we're weak, he is strong because we give him room to move. When we realize how dependent we are on him, then it gives him room to move. The goodness of God can flow through your life and through my life. Nobody can say that they have nothing to offer. God designed you on purpose and he put gifts in you. He put potential in you. And as you flow in the anointing that God gives to you, you can do what he is calling you to do. You can't say, I've got nothing to give. You can be in that channel of the blessing. Even if, like Phoebe, we don't know what she thought, what she felt, but she served and she went the journey. Let us all go the journey to delivering the message that God gives us to deliver in whatever way that is. God honors faithfulness. I don't know about you, but I don't have a, an awful lot. I have no real qualifications. I have very few real skills, but I am available to God and God can do all kinds of things when we work together with him, when we submit in his hand and serve his agenda. God can use the weak and foolish things more than he can use those that are wise in their own eyes. So we just need to just trust him. Just take his hand step by step, have the heart of a servant, have the ears to listen and to learn and be always teachable. He will equip. He is faithful. He knows your strength. We have a purpose. We have a good master. He can take you. He can use you. A good tool in the hand of a good master. I just want to finish with verse 25. I give all my praises and glory to the one who has more than enough power to make you strong and to keep you steadfast through the promises found in the wonderful news that I preach. That is the proclamation of Jesus, the anointed one. This wonderful news includes the unveiling of the mystery kept secret from the dawn of creation until now. Let's just, let's just pray. Lord, we just bring to you our lives. I ask you for a fresh sense of your calling, of your equipping. Lord, I pray for courage. Lord, for those that are facing challenges, I pray for courage to step into what you're calling us to. Lord, even if our knees are wobbly, we want to go with you. I pray that you would lead us into freedom, Lord, to follow you without fear. Just ask you for a fresh anointing. I ask that you'd reveal to us, Lord, what you're doing. Lord, you said you share your plans with your friends. And I pray, Lord, that you would direct us Direct our paths. Show us, Lord, what you're doing in our lives. Show us what you're calling us into. The purposes that you have for us. Lord, I just pray that you would bring a fresh joy, a fresh sense of excitement in serving you, in walking with you, and in seeing your kingdom come and your will be done. Lord, that we would know what a privilege it is to serve you. 
the one who is eternal life, the living God. We just honor you, Lord. Just honor you, Lord. We just submit to your ways. Just ask for your leading. Amen. Amen. God bless. See you next time.